I have a Mitsubishi projector, the model HC5500. I have a bulb we got to swap out on it today, and it is extremely dusty. Just to let you know, it's a ceiling projector. So I'm going to go ahead and blow all the dust off of it, clean out the air filters and everything, try and get this thing operational to where it will keep working for a long time. I'm going to take it outside first and just blow it off. I don't think anybody really needs to see a lot of that. I might show you whenever I do the air filters in these sections. Got some here. I'm going to remove them, take them outside, and blow it off as well. Have it lightly dusted off for the most part. I blew most of the dust outside. Just brought it back in to do this light dusting. Really don't want to get a lot of dust back in the building, so we take it outside. Got two tabs here. I'm going to press down, tilt this grid out, and I got this air filter here. I'm going to look inside, make sure there's no fan in there before I start blowing on anything. fan in this part. I know there's a fan on the opposite side. Spin it around here and show you. I've got a fan in this part here and uh, before I blow any air in there you want to put something in, anything in there to keep the fan from spinning. You put a zip tie sliver in there, a piece of a zip tie. I'm going to put it between the blades just to make sure that it's not going to rotate when I blow it off. I don't want the, sometimes you can fry a circuit board inside that fan or the system by sending too much surge of the rotations of it. Then pull it out. So that, that just stopped the fan blade from spinning. Turn it back around. Go ahead and blow out the rest of this side before I put the filter back and clear it out. got the filter. See how dirty it is. You can see the lines of dust on it. I'm going to take it outside and blow it out and bring it back. Do the best you can to recall which side of the filter was facing which direction. So whenever you put it back in, you'd have to have it uh, out the opposite way and have the dust collect and just blow right back into the system. Go ahead and pin this back in. There's some uh, small clamps here it goes under. Making sure it's secured under all these little tabs. Just drop the bottom back in. Push it to latch it. Now it's time to access the bulb. I need to swap this bulb out. It's been giving us some error readings lately. It is flipped upside down. We use it in an upside down orientation from the ceiling, so I'm just keeping it that way. Uh, release the one screw at the top, and the panel just tips out and comes out. Screws on the inside. There's one down low here, and there's one. There it is. Right there, you can see it. I'm going to back both of those Phillips screws out. That's holding in the lamp housing. arm out just swings out ease it out that's the lamp I got to replace All right, I'm not so worried about the old bulb with touching it with my hands but once I get into the new bulb I am going to put some gloves on I'm going to go ahead and get this connector off pay attention to the, the orientation of how it is always before you disassemble something. Just pops right out. I 
pulled straight out towards myself. Let's feed this line back through the inside. Alright. Go ahead and take this side cover plate off here. And also pay attention to the way your wires are orientated in the the housing itself. You know, you want you like to put it back exactly the way you found it. All right. I'm just going to wiggle it out. I've got this securing frame piece. Get the bulb out. Kind of brought the top out in this image brought the top out like that and then going to bring it up and out of the housing now I'm going to get my gloves on for handling the new bulb make sure this lens looks clean yeah it looks real crystal clear I'm not going to put any fingerprints on it Time to drop the new one in. I'm going to try and feed my cables through just a little first. I'm going to set the bottom in place first and then tip the top in. Put my retaining clip around it. Side retaining clip back in. Make sure those are seated all the way. Now, as you can see, there's a little, maybe you can see it. There's a little clip on there. There it is. That clip has got to go under this lip here. The big, the large part of that clip, right there. There you can see it in the light a lot better too. So, I'm gonna put that clip under. Line it up. There's a pin here on the side, right beside the screw hole. Make sure it's lined up. Put the screw back in. Go ahead and position our clip. Give a little more slack on these lines. Something just doesn't quite feel right. All right, now we're all set back up to put the new bulb back in. I just want to point out something inside here. Try and get to where you can see it. Wow, you can barely see it in that light. There's two tabs down in here. There's one. That tab right there. It's kind of angled in the light. The bulb has to go behind that tab. That keeps it pressed up tight to the fixture. So I'm going to feed my, my lines through the side here. And now I'm going to tip that head out far enough to make sure I get behind those two tabs in the base. And then lock the bulb down in it. Good. 
I'm going to put my retaining housing clip back around the bulb. Should feel like a really snug fit. One little tip if you push this retaining clip back in and it doesn't feel snug, you probably aren't in on those two clips at the bottom that I showed you before we started putting this bulb in. Alright, so the side clip is back in, the bulb's held in real tight. I'm going to put this side clip back on. Notice that there is a, uh, a lip there on it. See that little rectangular lip in the middle? It's going to go underneath this slot section here. Maybe if I point it to you, there you can see it. So it's actually going under and next to the bulb. Get where I can work with it better now that you see where it's going. A tight fit trying to get around that that retention clip. And you've got a, a pin on the end here next to this screw hole that's got to line up. So now that's a, that's a line there. It dropped in the peg hole. There you can barely see it in the light. It's time to set the screw back in it. Back. We're going to put the connector back the way it goes. Take myself a little bit of slack in the back. Out. Give myself room to bend these cables around. Awesome. Stir our screws back in. Alright, so we're all set up to put it back in. Let's take your bulb, hold it by the handle, pay attention to where your connectors are and where they were on the inside. If you don't remember from when you extracted it, just feed it in there nice and steady. Seed it in properly so it connects to the inside terminals. Tighten your screws down that secure the lamp housing. Secure your latch, your handle for removing the housing again. Just press it back. Put your cover plate back on. Put your two latches in the bottom. I'm upside down as well, remember. So I'm putting my latches in the bottom. If you're right side up, your latches will be at the top, and then the door swings up or down, depending on which way you have your projector oriented. Alright, so that should be it. I just got to go plug it back in and reset our lamp life. That's how you change out the bulb on a Mitsubishi. This is a HC5500.